Welcome to part 3 of my new server build. This part will cover the entire hardware build of the unit itself. Now due to the length of the video that I had to record to cover the entire build, I'm going to have to break it down into steps. It'll be three or four steps that'll cover each of the phases that I went through as I built it. I need to do this because I don't want to release a two hour video which would drive me crazy if I got that. So enjoy and hopefully you get something out of it. If you do, I'll say at the beginning here, please subscribe to my channel. It would be very helpful. Thank you and watch on. Welcome to my server build part three. In this video, I'm going to actually start putting all of the hardware together. What you see here on the table is the hardware that I believe I'm going to need. The actual case, the Cooler Master Elite 130 ITX case I've shown in the previous two videos. The power supply that I've picked is the Corsair CX450M, which is a partly modular, which means that the main cables that have to go on the motherboard are connected to the power supply but the others I will get to select. That'll save me some cable management inside the case. The CPU cooler that I will use for this one is going to be the Cooler Master ML120L RGB. Now my original intent was not to put RGB in this particular server, but this was on sale. So, you know, I can't uh, avoid saving 40% and it will do the job in terms of keeping the CPU cool. The CPU that I've chosen also on sale was the Intel i5-8600K. It's an OEM processor, that's why you don't see it in the commercial box. This is actually a pretty high performing processor. It should do well for my server. The motherboard that I've chosen is the ASRock H370M ITX motherboard that happens to have Wi-Fi on it. I doubt I'll be using it, but it does have it. It also has two one gigabit network connectors that are hardwired which is something that could speed up performance depending on how we configure the software. It also provides a backup if one of the two lines were to go down. The memory I've chosen is a 16 gigabit kit from Corsair DDR4. They are the Vengeance LPX type memory. Frequency is 3000 megahertz. I have purchased a 480 gigabyte solid state drive that will be the main drive for loading the operating system. I will probably have more than one operating system loaded on this and this should still be more than enough because for a server we're not using the hard drive for the operating system to any great extent. In addition to that I got myself since this motherboard supports it I got myself an M2 drive. This particular M2 drive is 500 gigabytes and it will serve entirely as a cache for the NAS portion of the server, the network addressable storage. For the network addressable storage, I have purchased six of these drives. They are the Seagate Ironwolf six terabyte drive and the four of them will be running in a RAID 5 configuration the way I have it planned right now, which means I will get approximately 75% of this storage. So even though I have four times six terabytes, which should be 24 terabytes of available space, because I'm putting it in RAID 5, so we have some redundancy, then I'm only gonna get 18 terabytes out of this configuration. And as you saw when I was modding the case, we have room now for four of these guys. In addition to that, I have this special adapter that I've purchased that will go into the five and a quarter inch bay. And what I'll be able to do with this is use that bay for one of the three and a half inch six terabyte drives and a DVD, a slim line DVD. So both of them will share the same five and a quarter inch slot. This is actually something that's originally made for a laptop, but you can put them in a desktop with the proper configuration. The cabling is still the same and that'll give us that as an option. Not sure if I'll use that much. It's not a, a Blu-ray, it's just a regular DVD writer, but you never know. I, I still tend to lean towards having it rather than not having it. A few other things I have here. I have a, an assortment of cables. I'm gonna go for the red SATA power cables as much as I can, but I have an assortment of reds of different sizes, but I also have some blacks of different sizes as well. Hopefully I'll have enough of these reds depending on how cable management works out 
to actually fill it all up. I'm also going to be replacing the feet. These are rubber feet that are going to be replacing the plastic feet that are on this Elite 130 case. They will provide some level of protection from the vibration and the noise that this case might generate when it gets busy. This fan I've already showed, so it's an empty box right now. That's already installed in the case in my modded panel that I created to hold this slimline 120 millimeter fan. And that's gonna blow out from the side. So we're gonna have some interesting fan arrangements on this one. I went ahead and purchased, just in case, and I haven't decided whether I'm going to use this or not, another 80 millimeter fan. This one is PWM that could be used and may be used to replace the existing non-PWM fan 80 millimeter that's currently in this case. We'll see how it all works out with the cable management and whether this is noisy or not, whether or not I'm going to actually use it. But it was cheap, so I purchased it. In addition, I'm gonna have a positive air pressure inside this case. That is my standard when I'm building a PC. So I purchased a number of these magnetic filters. This is a pack of two, and I believe this is a pack of three. This is 140 millimeter. This is a double 280 millimeter. Very fine mesh filter that has magnetic adhesive connectors that can go on the side of the case. I will probably be drilling additional holes, as I mentioned during my modding, to allow more airflow through there. And any fans that are blowing air in I will put one of these filters on the outside of it. So with that, I think it's time to go ahead and start the build. I will populate the motherboard on my anti-static mat at my desk. Here is a list of parts that I used or demonstrated in the course of this video. And the prices that I actually paid for them include tax and shipping. Keep in mind many of these parts I purchased on sale. Okay, let me now assemble the motherboard components or the things that I want to put on the motherboard before I put it in the case. Before I do that, let me get on my uh, wrist grounding strap. Oh, wait a minute. I don't see any mo mood written on here or my, my astrology. Maybe this is the wrong thing. Sorry, bad joke. Okay, I'm going to use the motherboard case to put the initial components on. Now, even after I get it all together here, I am not going to put it into the case until I test it on my test bench. Check this out. What else do we have in here? Got the IO shield. Got the software drivers, which I'll probably not use that. Online is more up to date. The two antenna for the uh, Wi-Fi. And it looks like uh, SATA cables. I'll see if I need those or not. I hope not. I want to get all the SATA cables to be read if possible. So let me just go ahead and leave all this stuff in here for now. And I'll take the motherboard out of its protective wrapping. Even though I have an anti-static strap, I'll do my best not to touch anything that might be sensitive to static. So let me just put it right down on here. As I said before, I've got two one gigabyte Ethernet RJ45 connectors here. It's got quite a collection of things. It's got those two. It's got uh, two of the higher speed USB. Looks like three, four, three, three point O's. And it's got two two point O's. And it's still got the, the old connector if you wanted to use the old PS2 mouse keyboard connector. I had to put an adapter on there for that to work. I think I have one somewhere in my junk drawer. And it's got both a display port and an HDMI port, so it can handle two monitors. Now, actually, it's got two HDMIs, so it can do three monitors. Since it's a server, it's not even going to have a monitor on it once I've configured it properly. Let me start with the processor chip. Now, even though I put the processor chip on, I will not be putting a cooler on yet because it's going to use the all-in-one cooler that I showed a few minutes ago. It's wrapped up quite well. Before I do that, let me open this up. Open it up by pushing down on this spring and then over to the side. Hold it steady until that pops up. And then I bring it all the way back. The delicate part here are all of these pins. So I will not touch any of those. A quick glance. They look like they're probably okay. Let me get a flashlight to double check. I don't see any unusual reflections coming off of it. So it's good to check. 
to make sure that it looks good, and I think it does. Let me take the processor now. Take it and hold it by its edges. Again, this is what you have to worry about the static on, is something like this. Now for the processor, it generally is aligned in the same way the letters are readable on the motherboard, although this is an exception with these letters here, but most of the stuff is readable from the angle I'm at. The writing that's etched into the microprocessor chip aligns the same way. So if you notice, there's a little diamond here on the corner, and there's a diamond on the corner here, and if you look at the bottom, there's actually a diamond mark there as well. So this is telling me it needs to go in this way. Now you can't really get it wrong, although you shouldn't be doing a lot of attempts on this, because it is keyed. There are two little keys here, one on each side here. One here, let me bring it back off the camera so you can see it. One here and one over on this side as well. So those keys follow two notches that are in the socket. So I should be able to just lie it down right in there, very gently lie it down. And then I just gently wiggle it from side to side and up and down and make sure that it seems to be in place. I'm not going to show the wrong way to do it. I assure you it would not be doing this so easily if I had had it rotated by 90 or 180 degrees. So now I close the hood and you've got to get this little tab underneath this screw. So I've got to push down and push it back a little bit like this so that it will go underneath the screw. And then I push down on this lever again, this spring tensioned lever, and the protector should pop off. And it does. And I get that underneath the metal tab on the socket hood. And then this, we save. In case I have to ever return that motherboard to the manufacturer, I'm going to need to put this back on or else they might not honor the, honor the warranty that goes along with that. I want to do the M2 drive. I want to get everything that's low inside the motherboard first. That's the easiest way to deal with it. So the M2 drive I have over here, in this case, in this box, the crucial 500 gigabyte M2 NVMe. Take it out of its little protective case here. And again, handling it very, very carefully. It has two tabs here to grab it by, and that's how I'm going to grab it. I'm going to take this and get it in place there. Oops, before I do that though, let me get the little screw that goes into this. There's a very minute screw that has to go inside of that standoff. I do want to check to make sure the standoff's in the right place. There are actually multiple places it can be at, depending on the length of your M2. This one looks like it's in the right place for me. So let me just tick it in here, and you've got to put it into the socket, like so. And you got to make the lands disappear into the socket. So you wiggle a little bit until you don't see those lands anymore. And then it's, it's spring tension at this point. But I cannot put it until I get the M2 screw. Let me put this aside. This is an anti-static mat, so we're good. Let me go back in the box and get the little screw that should be in here somewhere. There it is. There's my little M2 screw. Small Phillips head screw. Don't lose that screw, they're hard to come by, believe me. The cardboard box with the paint is anti-static. Reach over here and get me some screwdrivers. You can see that very carefully. I don't want to drop it on my floor here and try to be lost forever. So I got this little screw, and I believe it's probably this one right here. That'll be the most accurate. Let me double check. I don't want to play with screw heads when it's on there. So what I need to do here, now I'll put this aside. I have to push it back down, I have to put that little screw on, gently, you don't want to over tighten this, we just want it to hold the thing down so it doesn't wiggle out. It's really all I should need, yep. So now I have my M2 drive in here. Got the processor, got the M2 drive, now for the regular memory. Open this guy up, get out my steam gigabit kit, wiggle it a little bit. Now, I've only got two sockets here, so it doesn't really matter which one I put them in. 
but what I'm going to do is um, make sure I align this little tab properly. It is not dead center, this little tab in the middle. It's a little bit off center. And if you notice the sockets, they have an off center tab as well. So you have to make it the same way. Make sure that both ends are open if it has both ends. This one has a locked in place end. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the inner one first. I found that that's the easiest way to do it because I can see it better. The tab lines up and I push straight down and this tab should automatically lock it in place. There we go. See how the tab closed? So that memory is in. Second one, same thing. Make sure the tab is lined up properly. It's open over here. Push it straight down into the socket. Always make sure the back end falls in properly there. Push it and that should close again. Locked. Both of those tabs are now locked in place. Preliminary configuration of the motherboard is now complete. Let me move this to the test bench, clean up around here, and we can attach the cooler. I do want to attach the all-in-one cooler and make sure that it's properly functioning and that I can get this thing to post, which means that the board passes its initial testing that it goes through whenever you first apply power to it. Okay, that concludes step one. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Click on the picture of my head right here. Thanks.